Hey, I'm Mike Baccarella, and today we're going to take a look at three different chord concepts from Pat Metheny using open strings, using harmonics, as well as chordal fragments. Let's take a look. <laughs> these chordal ideas come from Pat Metheny's accompaniment to Jocko's solo on Bright Size Life. So the first one we're going to take a look at is open strings. In this first example, Pat's playing a G major 7. But he's not playing all the notes, and that's a running theme you'll see through all these examples, is Pat doesn't always play all the notes of the chord, but he doesn't necessarily need to. Our ears can kind of fill in the gaps. So we start here with our third finger on the F sharp on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And our second finger is going to stay anchored on the third fret of the second string on that D note. It's going to stay there the whole time. And our pattern is going to be fourth string, third string, second string, and then back to the fourth string. When we move to the fourth string, we will change the note. So we're going to start with our third finger on the F sharp, and then our pinky is going to come and play a G natural, which will be a unison with the open third string. Then back to the F sharp, down to E, second fret, and open. So here's this full pattern. Now our rhythm here is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now the most important thing here is we want to make sure our fingers are standing up straight so we're not accidentally muting that third string. So what he's doing there is he's playing a B flat major triad with this first, second, and third finger. B flat, D, F. And then we have the open E string, which would be our sharp 11. It's going up and down the arpeggio. And our rhythm is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That gives us the root third, fifth, and sharp 11. Now we're missing the seventh, but Again, like I said, these chordal fragments are really cool and give a kind of open sound. We don't always need all the information. Now this idea of, 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 of having one string open is something that we can export to get different tones that rub against each other in a cool way. But what if I play this? So what I'm doing here is I have A, C sharp, D sharp, and then the open E string. And that gives us an A major triad with a sharp 11. So it's another major 7 sharp 11 chord. And same rhythm, same picking. I can take this and play this over a C major add nine. So what I'm doing is I'm playing C with my pinky on the 10th fret, fourth string, D with my first finger on the seventh fret, third string, G with my second finger on the eighth fret of the second string, and the open E string. So that C, G, and open E give me a C major triad, and that D gives me the ninth. And I play it together. These two notes are a whole step apart, but they're separated by strings. So this gives us a really cool open sound. So this open string concept is something you can take and run with and try to apply it any chord that an E can work over. Try to throw it in there and then, you know, drone it against that open E string and see what you can come up with because there's a lot of really cool sounds here. This is a concept that Pat Metheny uses a lot throughout his playing. Now the second concept is using harmonics within chords. Now when we use these harmonics within the chords, we don't, we can't necessarily move these to all the different keys because the harmonics only happen in so many places on the guitar. But in places where they do occur, we can really take advantage of this. So in this example, Pat plays a low G on the third fret of the sixth string with his first finger. It's over a G major seven. And then with his pinky, he grabs the harmonic on the seventh fret of the second, third, and fourth string. And this gives us kind of like a G major 9 sound. The harmonic raises the notes by an octave. So when we play this, we're actually playing this, this, this D triad up here. It's the same notes. 
And so we have a bass note way down here and a chord way up here. So we're separating our chord by quite a large interval. It gives us a really cool, very open sound. And we can play around with this a little bit. Later in the same progression, there's a part in the tune where it goes D and then D over C. What if I play this? So I'm grabbing D on the 6th string on the 10th fret with my pinky, and then harmonic with the 1st finger, and then grab C with my 2nd finger on the 8th fret, and grab the harmonic again. And that's even something I could do because the harmonic will ring on its own without needing any fingers. I can move the bass note without having to play this chord again. So I can sustain that harmonic while moving the bass note around, which can give me some pretty cool sounds. One other situation where we can easily apply this is over C major 7. We can grab that harmonic on the 12th fret with our pinky. And again, it gives us kind of a C major 9 sound. Now this third concept is my favorite of these three concepts. We're just going to take pieces of chords and move them around. And we won't have all the information, but that's totally cool in some situations. So what he plays is over a G major 7. He plays a B and an F sharp, which is our third and major seventh. And brings down to an E, which would be our, like our sixth or thirteenth. And he's playing this over a G major seven. Now we can take this just this shape and move it all through G major seven. And we start here with A and E, which is our second and sixth. And bring it down to D, which is our fifth. Again, B and F sharp, which is our third and major seventh. Bring it down to the sixth, which is E. D and A which is our fifth and second, bring it down to the root, which is G, by E and B, which is my sixth and third, bring it down to A, which is our second. I can play this on F sharp and C sharp, which is my major seventh and sharp 11, bring it down to G, which is our third. And that all works over G major seven. that's just the beginning. We can take this first shape and apply it to almost any bass note and see how it can fit. So over a C, this would be my major 7th and sharp 11 and bring it down to the 3rd. So this works over a C major 7 sharp 11. Over a C sharp, this would be my flat 7 and my 11, bring it down to the minor 3rd. So this could work over a C sharp minor 7. Over D, this can be my 6th and major 3rd. And bring it down to the ninth. so it's kind of like a D6-9. Over E flat, it doesn't, it's not the best situation, but I, I could justify this possibly as a, as a sharp 5, going up to the sharp 9, going down to the flat 9, so it's kind of like a, kind of like an E flat 7 altered. Over E, I have my 5th and ninth going down to the root, so this could work over a major or a minor, because there's no 3rd. Over F, this doesn't really work so well. Over F sharp, I have my fourth, my root, and my flat seven. Can it work like F sharp minor eleven? Over G we already covered, but we got our major third and major seventh going down to the sixth. Over A flat, this could be an altered again because that's my sharp nine, my flat seven, going down to the sharp fifth. Over A, I got my second and sixth going down to the fifth, so this could work over a major or minor. Over B flat, this could be my flat nine and sharp fifth going out of the flat fifth. Over B, a root and fifth coming out of the fourth. So it could work over a sus or a minor 11, and then we're back to C. So any one of these chordal fragments can potentially have a dozen applications or more. So that's a really great concept to look at. These are three really great concepts from Pat that he uses a lot in his playing, and I try to use as much as I can because, as you can see, there's so much you can do with this. Whether it's open strings, harmonics, or just the chordal fragments, there's a lot to dig into here. So thanks for checking out this lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time. Thank you.